This is a discussion that we should be having. And if you say, Michael, you don't know this, let me inform you about this. Okay, tell me. And if there's something that you think that I should know that I'm off base, tell me. I want to hear it. But this is too important now, okay? The, the, the future of this country is going to rest on what happens this year. I'm walking redemption. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. All is very good. Very blessed on this end. And as always, my friends, I give all the praise, honor, glory, and thanksgiving to God for that. Before I get into anything, this uh, beautiful canvas behind me, everybody's asking me about it. Michael, how can we get one? Is it going to be available? Well, that piece behind me won't be, but this is a canvas. It's amazing. And we're trying to make it available on a limited basis. Right now, I'm the only one that has one. We'll see what happens. Uh, stay tuned. Hopefully, by the end of the month, we'll have some news for you. But uh, it's a work of art, one of a kind, very unique, and hopefully we'll be able to make it available to some of you out there that want it. And from what <laughs> the uh, messages that I'm getting, there's many of you out there that do. You know, people, this is just today me having a conversation with all of you. There's some things on my mind that I just have to talk about, you know. And I really respect all of you out there. I respect the message that I get from so many of you, the comments that I get from so many of you. And, um, you know, there's some issues that I think are worth talking about. People do appreciate my perspective. At least that's what I'm getting from the comments. And by the way, I am going to be on Rumble. It's a little bit of a different platform. I think we go to uh, post our first Rumble video next week. So look for that. I'm excited about that. Different platform, different what you'll see here. But today, I just want to talk about things that are bothering me. And you saw the title here with Donald Trump. You know, I have to to talk about this. And um, people, let me tell you something. If I were on the street now, me and my former associates, I wouldn't want Trump in office. Absolutely not. We would be voting against him if we could vote. You know, many of us could. Why? Because he is a conservative in his uh, ideology. He's tough on crime. He's all the things that we wouldn't want him to be if we were on the street. We gravitated toward Democrats back then. I told you why. I'm not, I don't want to be redundant, but I've said this to you many times because they were easier to get to. They were easier to corrupt. They were easier to bribe. And that's the truth. And they were softer on crime. And so as a criminal, which is what I was and what my former associates were, we wouldn't want somebody that was tough on crime. You know, I'll never forget. My dad hated Ronald Reagan. He said, number one, he's too tough on crime. Number two, he hates Italians. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what my dad said. My dad also didn't like John Wayne. I love John Wayne because I loved all his Westerns. My dad didn't like him. He said he didn't like Italians. I don't know where he got that from. Maybe he knew something that I didn't know. But my point is, when we were on the street, we were looking for people that were soft on crime. We wanted laxed policies. We didn't want stringent policies, you know. Today, things have kind of flipped, okay? You know, some people have been upset with me. There are people that said, I'm, I'm going to unsub you, Michael, because you uh, are for Donald Trump. Let me tell you something. I am for a conservative candidate. That's who I want in office. Why? Because they believe in the things that I believe in now. Number one, crime. Okay, I'm not a criminal anymore. I have a different perspective on it. That was 30 years ago. Okay, my life has changed. I have a beautiful and loving wife that has changed my perspective on many things. I have seven children. I have seven grandchildren. When they walk down the street, I want them to be protected. I want them to live a normal life. I don't want them to live in fear. I don't want to have to go out and get my daughter's, you know, devices so that when they're on the street, if somebody attacks them, they have something to protect themselves with. And yeah, I've done that. I, my wife, the same thing. So I'm not soft on crime anymore because I want law enforcement to enforce the laws. I think it's important. Now, let me make it clear. There's some things that I think need to be reformed in law enforcement like anything else. All right. In our prison system, there needs reform like anything else. We understand that nothing is perfect and things can be reformed. But am I soft on crime anymore? No. I want people that are tough on crime. OK, the street crimes, the thing that they should be tough on. And people, it's it just, you know, defunding the police. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. I am a former criminal. I am telling you, you're not going to talk criminals out of not doing crimes. The only way you're going to talk them out of it is by locking them up or having them pay consequences. Trust me on that. OK, so for all of you that think differently, you're thinking wrong. And if you look at the major cities where crime is going rampant, you'll understand that. You live in L.A., you live in Portland, Oregon, you live in New York City, live in some of these places, you would see that. All right, so Trump, 
Okay, why would I be for him? Because he's tough on crime. He's a law and order guy. He wants to protect the streets. Is that a bad thing? Forget his character. Maybe you don't like him. You want to put somebody in office that's going to do the best for you and your family and for the United States of America. If you think that's Biden and the Democrats, more power to you. Go for it. Go for it. If that's what you feel and you honestly believe that that's it, that's your ideology, you love those policies, then go for it. Okay, we have a, a civil disagreement. That's okay. That's what this country was built upon. All right, let's take it a step further. Look what's happening over the border. People, I want to tell you something, okay? I don't want fentanyl and opioids pouring over the border. I don't want it. I've had death in my family because of fentanyl. I've had death in my family because of opioids and because of drugs. I don't want it. We had 100,000 people that died last year because of opioid and fentanyl addiction and overdoses. I don't want that. If it's coming over the southern border, I want it to stop. That's it. And how do we stop that? By closing the border, okay, properly and allowing immigration to be done properly. And come on, there are laws in effect that allow that to happen now. Is it perfect? No. Are Democrats and Republicans both at fault for not having an immigration policy that everybody can live with, that makes sense, that works? Of course they are. Both sides, no question about it. But we know that the current president can close the border just like the former president did, and we wouldn't have the issues that we're having today. You know, I read today in the news, a hospital in Denver is closing down. It's going bankrupt because they spent $130 million on illegal immigrants, giving them care to the point where um, citizens are being turned away. And who's paying for that? Taxpayers. Do any of you want that out there? Really? Is something like six or seven or eight million illegal immigrants that have flooded into this country. Does anybody want that? When mayors now in democratic cities are starting to really be pressed, they can't deal with it anymore. They're starting to go to Biden and say, hey, this has to stop. And some of you here may say, well, that's the Republicans' fault because Republican governors are shipping them out. Well, those are sanctuary cities. Why should the Republican cities that are not sanctuary cities, why should they bear the burden of Biden's policy? They shouldn't. They really shouldn't. The one person that can stop this is Joe Biden, and he's not. And for me, I'm putting out my reasons why I believe that Democrats are very Machiavellian. They want to stay in power. They want control. So they want to bring these immigrants in somehow, some way will allow them to vote. And before long, they want to turn every state blue and just remain in power. That's what I believe, because I can't think of any other logical reason why this is occurring to the detriment of citizens of the United States. It's not helping anyone, people. So yeah, okay, would Trump close the border down? Yes, okay, so I want Trump. And maybe so would DeSantis, so would Nikki Haley. And maybe Munch, uh, Manchin would do it too, okay? Okay, great. It's not all, always about Republican or Democrat. It's about the person that's going to go in there and do the right job, people. And again, if you disagree with me, I want to hear it in the comments. And you know what? Let's have a civil disagreement because, you know, I'm not subbing you anymore, Francis, and you're for this. I mean, come on. I am for protecting my country. I'm for the welfare of my country because, believe it or not, I am somewhat of a patriot now. No, I didn't serve in the war. Okay, I had a high number in the draft and I never, uh, and I didn't enlist. Okay, I'm being honest, but I love this country. This country was good to me. It's been good to my family. Okay, and to people that I love. So I'd love to see it go on the way it did before. And by the way, I want to make a correction for all you people out there. You're so astute, and I really appreciate that. You're correct. I said this country is a democracy. It's not. It's a constitutional republic, and there is a difference. So thank you for correcting me. Um, I just say democracy off the top of my head because, you know, we're democratic for sure. But we are a constitutional republic, and thank you all for correcting me on that. You did it when I did the Epstein visit. So listen, former mob guys are now, you know, supporting Trump because we have a different perspective now. When we were on the street, we were criminals, we were thieves, we were stealing. We're not doing that anymore. Now we're looking out for the welfare of the people that we love and the, and the country that we now love. So we take a different position on that. And listen, I'm not here to support Donald Trump's character. I'm really not. Nor am I here to support DeSantis or anybody else. But you gotta say this, people. You have to understand this. OK, this current administration, without a doubt, is weaponizing the Department of the Justice, the FBI. This is factual. 
I'm not making it up. It's in the news. It's being reported. Okay, they are weaponizing, okay, government agencies to go after their political enemies. It's not right. Donald Trump has been the most investigated guy that I, more than a lot of guys on the street. He's got four indictments, number one. Number two, he was impeached two times. He had an investigation, the Mueller investigation, for months and months and months, went on $35 million. How many witnesses? It came up empty. So far, everything is coming up empty, but they keep throwing everything at him. You know, Tucker Carlson said to him, you know, in an interview, Donald, what are they going to do to stop you? Are they going to assassinate you? Are they going to try to kill you? What's next? They want to put him in jail. And remember this too, people, 75 million people voted for Donald Trump last time around. If you're taking the right of those people to present their candidate that they want for president, who are they really going after? This is not about Trump. This is about, as Biden would say, the MAGA Okay, Republicans, there happen to be 75 million of them. That is a big number of people. And by the way, he's the president of those people too. So why would he talk like that? You know, why would he talk like that? And again, understand something, okay? Donald Trump is not perfect. I'm not saying that. I'm not standing up for his character as, you know, everybody should follow the way Donald Trump behaves. But you got to admit that he was good for America. His policies were good for America, okay? He was tough on China. We had relative peace throughout the time that he was in office. And I heard on one of the interviews that, you know, some people are saying they don't want the chaos if Donald Trump, Trump comes back in office. And you know what? I agree with that. But when you look back at the four years, where did the chaos come from? The chaos came from the attacks against Donald Trump all the time. The impeachments, okay, the Mueller investigation, all of that stuff. That's where the chaos came from. And he responded to it, maybe in a way that I didn't like. I thought some of the things he did were very petty. I thought his tweets were very petty. They were unpresidential. He shouldn't do that. It's the only way that he knew how to fight back. That's who he is. He's a New Yorker in some ways. That's what he does. But I want to tell you something. If I were president of the United States, and that will never happen, I would in a million years wouldn't be elected even if I tried to run, which I never would. My wife would Believe me, if I ever tried, it would be ridiculous. But here's what I would do. Here's what I would do. Number one, I would immediately shut down the border. Immediately. I'd have to. Okay, what's happening because of, of, of the, immig the illegal immigrants in the southern border, it's terrible what's going on. I'd have to shut the border down. Do you know that there are thousands of gotaways, people that are in this country that we don't know who they are? And they're not all good players, trust me. Many of them want to hurt the United States. I've heard that from Border Patrol agents. I would shut the border down and I would do everything in my power to get Congress to come up with a viable immigration policy. That would be number one. Number two, I'd have to do everything in my power to reduce inflation so that people can live their lives. Is there anything wrong with that? No. Would Donald Trump do that? He says he would. We got to hold him to it if he does get back in office. Who knows? I don't know if he will. All right. So that would be, I would immediately, immediately, if it were me, uh, Iran is a bad player. There's something there. Okay, we'd have to look into that. We reversed the nuclear deal that Trump went away from. Okay, they brought it back. And what happened? Okay, Iran is a big player again. It's a proxy war. They're the ones that are supporting the Houthis and all these other terrorist groups. Trouble. Would I be a supporter of Israel? Of course. They're our only ally in the Middle East. They're a major ally in the Middle East. You know, do I want to see Palestinians, you know, innocent ones die? Of course not. I would do everything in my power to stop that war, but I'd have to support Israel. But we want to stop. Nobody wants war. Anybody in their right mind doesn't want war unless you're a terrorist and you're trying to do something or maybe Russia. You know, Ukraine, I don't have the answer, but I would certainly look into that, you know, to keep sending them money when we are starving for money here in the United States, when people in Chicago, OK, are complaining like crazy when people in New York are complaining, we don't have enough money to fund, okay, the, the policies and, and the offices that needed to be funded here in the United States and we're sending money to all these various countries to support wars. So, you know, what am I saying in all this, people? This is just a conversation with all of you. All right, no, it's not a mob story or anything. It's a conversation. I want to hear from you. I want you to tell me if I'm wrong and you have something to disagree with, tell me. I want to hear it. You know, this is what we need. We need civil discussions. And people, I have to say this too. You know, I'm going to put it right out there. In my belief system, in my upbringing, and everything I know to be true from the beginning of time, there are only two genders. 
They are male and female. Am I against somebody that wants to do something different? That's their life. Let them do whatever it is they want to do. But as far as I'm concerned, there are two genders, okay? You know, so these are my feelings. I want you to share your opinion with me. I really do. I want to know what you think because, you know, you've been very loyal to me and I, I feel the same with you. And I think it's a good time to share our thoughts because this is a critical year. 2024 is a critical year in all of our lives. Trust me on that. It's going to be. So, you know, let me, uh, l let me tell you what I feel. You know, I think it's... Um, it's not right that the Democratic Party is pushing Biden only when other people want to get into the race. I think the American people, Democrats, should have a choice, all right, uh, of a candidate. It doesn't have to be Biden. He's tremendously unpopular. We know that. And why do we not have another choice? I would love to see Manchin or somebody else get into the race. You know, let's see. We're Americans. We deserve that choice. On the Republican side, honestly, I think any one of the candidates are better than what Biden has done. And you know what? Biden has a track record. If you support it, if you like it, I don't know. I've been watching the polls for months. He keeps sinking lower and lower and lower in every category. Foreign affairs, domestic affairs, you know, uh, the economy, every crime, everything. He's sinking lower and lower. He's not popular. He's not. You know, what do I think of, of Nikki Haley? I think she'd be a good candidate, better than Biden, honestly. DeSantis, he's got a record now in Florida, and the record is pretty darn good. I think he'd be a good president. Trump, we saw what Trump could do before. Now, think of Trump minus the chaos. Think of Trump being able to govern, or, you know, be president of the United States without everybody attacking him every minute. Think of his policies. Go back and think. You may not like the way he talks. You may not like certain things about him. That's okay. But think about his policies and whether you were better off when he was president or now. I don't think too many people can say they're better off now. I can be honest with you. So here's the thing. I think we all have to really dig down deep inside and put our likes and dislikes aside, you know, for personality and come out and say, is going to do the best job for the people of America. Who's going to do the best job for this country? Because this is a very, very critical year. It really is, people. And we have to, we have to vote properly. We have to put the right people in office. And I want to tell you this, you know, we cannot allow politicians to get up there and lie to us time after time after time again. And I will say this, you can, you can come at me for this, but I am telling you, I know from experience, okay, from experience that this stuff around Joe Biden and Hunter Biden, without a doubt, is a racketeering indictment. Without a doubt. I've had three racketeering indictments. I know them like the back of my hand. I had to defend it three times, once in a several month trial with Rudy Giuliani. I know these racketeering indictments. I am telling you that there was less information to indict me, less evidence to indict me than there is right now, right at this moment, okay, for Hunter and Joe Biden. Based upon the suspicious bank uh, recordings, the, uh, the money that's been transferred over $20 million, into the Biden family's account, okay? The witnesses that have testified, the text messages, the emails, it is, there is a, an abundance of evidence to indict. Whether or not there's a conviction, that's another story, but there is an abundance of evidence to indict. Let me ask you another question. We heard that there was um, classified documents that were at Joe Biden's house. Did you ever hear anything more about that? No, Trump got indicted over. You haven't heard a thing about it. Not a thing since this whole thing stirred up with Biden. Nothing. It's been over a year. We haven't heard a thing. Why? Because they're protecting Joe Biden. You can't have somebody in office that's not dealing in the best interests of you, your family, of the country in general, and just protect him. And I'll tell you, I'm going to leave it with this. The major, major problem that we have in this country now is the media. The media is in bed with the Democrats and the progressives. You're not getting the right information. They're not reporting the news. They're not reporting the facts. They're protecting, in many cases, criminal and illegal activities. So you can't make an informed decision. This is wrong. It's absolutely wrong. It's dangerous. It's so dangerous, okay? In every communist country, it's the people in power that control the narrative. They control the media. You only hear in those countries what they want you to hear. Propaganda, that's it, nothing else. 
That's happening in the United States. That has to stop. So let me hear from you. I want to hear what you have to say. If you differ with me and people don't get upset, you know, this is a discussion that we should be having. And if you say, Michael, you don't know this. Let me inform you about this. Okay, tell me. And if there's something that you think that I should know that I'm off base, tell me. I want to hear it. But this is too important now. Okay, the, the, the future of this country is going to rest on what happens this year in many, many ways. It's going to rest on what happens. So let's have intelligent dialogue. I've also been asked a couple of questions um, that I want to answer today. One of them is, is uh, really important to me. People say to me, you know what, Michael, if you're a Christian, how come you still talk about the mob? How come you still to do these things, you know? I actually had in the community section, if you look, I posed, I was back east and I had a, a blue suit on because I did a video and there was a couple of make-believe mob guys. who weren't real mob guys. We did a video. You're going to see. It's going to be a lot of fun. So people were, you know, saying to me, Michael, how can you still do that? My friends, listen, I don't glorify my former life, but understand this. God has given me a platform. When I first started sharing my testimony 25 years ago, not a lot of people knew me in the Midwest or wherever I went, okay? They didn't even put my name on the billboard, okay? But when my name went up, when, when it went up there that the mob guy was coming, the place was filled. Standing room only in many cases. They came to see the mob guy and then they went out there hearing about Jesus and what he's done in my life. You know, St. Augustine said it best sometimes, you know, preach the gospel whenever you can, and if you have to, speak. So my platform is something, you know, it's entertaining. People want to hear about that life. It's part of history, but I'm not glorifying it. It doesn't make me less of a Christian. I'm not encouraging young people to get into that life. Just the opposite. For 20 years, I've been telling people, don't get into that life. It's a bad life. It's an evil life. It's destructive life to families. But because I, you know, I talk about my former life, come on. And look, I'm going to be honest with you. There's some guys there that I missed that I loved. They were good people. Okay. They just did bad things like I did. Doesn't mean, you know, that you didn't have a heart for them or feeling for them. So please understand that. And, you know, I find Christians to be the most judgmental. Oh, Michael, you know what? You know, you're a Christian and, and you're still talking about that former life. Hey, you know what? Read your Bible, please. You're misunderstanding scripture. You really are. If we have a platform that God gave us, we use it to attract people and then to tell them about the Lord. Remember this, everybody out there. Remember this. What the enemy meant for bad, God will turn around and use for his glory if you allow him to. And that's been my story. That's the platform God has given me. And anybody that knows me and knows me well knows that. I've spoken at over 2,000 okay, churches and ministry events over the last 27 years. 2,000 people sharing my testimony in prisons, juvenile halls, and everything else. So don't look at this as an escape from my faith or turning my back on my faith. That's not so. And if I did, that's between me and God. You can't pull a scam on God. Trust me, we're going to stand in front of our Lord one day and everything is going to be brought in front of us. And I'm not pulling a wool over his eyes, that's for sure. And if I did, I'll suffer the consequences and they're going to be, you know, forever. And I'm not looking to do that. So, you know, that's it for today. I think it went on long enough. There's a lot of questions, but I'm going to save them. So, my friends, how do I always leave you? Same way. And please, let's have some good discussion about this. Don't anybody get mad or upset. Or, no, none of you Trump derangement syndrome people out there. And there are many. You wouldn't, if Trump came down and handed you a million dollars, you wouldn't like the guy. He would find fault in the million dollars. Okay? Forget his personality. Forget the personalities. Who is going to do the best for you, your family, and America? That's it for today. How do I always leave you the same way? Be safe. Be healthy. God bless each and every one of you. And yes, I'll see you next time. Take care.